how to become a better healthcare leader. Hello and welcome to another episode of Leading Health with Dr. Atom. I'm so happy that you can be here today. Today's episode, we are going to be exploring how you can become a better healthcare leader. Thank you guys for connecting, for engaging and for exploring this uh, show with me. Much appreciated. Let's get into it. So in today's show, we're going to be exploring five ways, five methods that you can use to become a better healthcare leader. Let's think about it. When failings happens, it's normally the healthcare leader that gets blamed or gets sacked. But when we think about healthcare leadership, what we realise is that actually poor quality care normally leads to failings. And when we look into what happened, there is normally a deficit in leadership. But we can't blame the healthcare leader because a lot of the times healthcare leaders get promoted on clinical competency and not leadership competency. And so what we need to think about, guys, is what steps can we take to actually advance our healthcare leaders, to make them more efficient, to make them more effective, and to be able to deliver that powerful care that we all look for. The first of the five key methods that we're going to be exploring today is leadership role rotation. What that means in essence is you as a leader, your willingness, ability to actually expose yourself to different roles within your healthcare organisation. What that does is it gives you this sort of interconnected overview, this holistic overview of your organisation, how the different roles actually interconnect. And so as a healthcare leader, you are able to see how your leadership decisions have a real world impact on other people's jobs. And as an extension of that, the care quality that you are delivering. And so what you want to do is to try and participate in about five different roles within about a two year period. That will give you that entrenched and advanced sort of competency that you need to be a really good healthcare leader. I have seen this in a lot of um, organisations, especially when I'm doing consultancy work in emerging economies and I'm working with partner organisations. I have seen them deploy um, role rotation in some manifestation and you know they actually realize the benefits for their leaders their leaders ability to have that sort of holistic overview so I think that leadership role rotation is definitely worth trying out so the second method that we need to talk about today is leadership action learning groups what this method entails is a situation in which individuals individual leaders within your organisation, come together to work on a specific project. Now, this is really important and this happens across all types of organisations, especially healthcare, where you're working in multidisciplinary teams. So imagine leaders from different disciplines coming together to work on a single project. This is really important because it advances that proactive, practical engagement that we need to learn as leaders. And so by coming together and engaging in that collective learning, you're able to actually improve your competency. Very, very important. So working in groups, we know from the research, actually advances motivation, it advances engagement. And that's what we're really looking for. And I've seen this in my own research when I've done group work. I've seen this in all types of organisations. So, for example, imagine if your healthcare organisation just opened a new department, right? You want to bring together different leaders to actually operationalise that new department. And so action learning groups, bringing these leaders together, enabling them to interact, to engage, to learn from each other is a really powerful tool in terms of improving the competencies of your healthcare leaders definitely give it a go. So the third leadership competency method that we can think about today is leadership development assessment centers. So normally they're just called assessment centers. And in essence, all they are is like a building where you go 
to build up your competency. And they're normally used for things such as like tests, for interviews, for doing group work. You can use them for all, um, things such as role playing, for like writing essays. You can also use them for critical reflection, that sort of critical reflexivity. And in essence, the aim of these assessment centers is to bridge the competency gap that your healthcare leaders have. And so by bridging the competency gap, you can take them from where they currently are to where you want them to be in terms of advancing their leadership skills and in doing so, improving your healthcare organization. There's lots of research that supports the use or the implementation of assessment centers and actually linking it with the effectiveness of leadership in terms of their performance. So let's think about it in an example format. Let's just think about you thinking about actually recruiting new leaders into your organization or you've just bought another um, healthcare organization. What you want to do through the assessment centers is to align the leadership competencies of the people that you've just brought in. But also you want to advance the leadership competencies, right? So you might have a specific way of doing things. So you're going to align um, the leaders that have just come into your organization and you're also going to advance. So I would argue that leadership development assessment centers are yet another really important tool in the toolbox that you can use to actually further improve the skills competencies of your healthcare leaders. The fourth method that we're going to be exploring today is leadership coaching. Leadership coaching within the healthcare context is really about that systematic approach that we take to try and improve the competencies of our leaders. So what we really want to do during this coaching period is to establish what the competency gap is, number one, really, really important. Then work with the leader to actually bridge that competency gap. We also want to deliver coaching in areas to try and enable them to be able to deal with difficult situations within the organization. There's going to be lots of them to manage conflict between staff and also when you're thinking about patients and also to think about how they can work more effectively within multidisciplinary teams. And I've mentioned this before because within the healthcare context, multidisciplinary working especially at the leadership level, I have observed through my research, through working in healthcare, and also through teaching that it's very, very important. There's lots of evidence to support the actual benefits of coaching. And we can also think about it from a sort of example point of view. So just imagine you have, I don't know, um, a really amazing member of staff who's coming to retire. They've been in your organization for years. What you can do is to facilitate an environment which enables them to pass on their wisdom through coaching to junior leaders within the organization. What that's going to do is to pass on those learned skills, those practical skills that can't be taught in the classroom and are normally passed on from person to person. So I think that's a really effective way to utilize the more experienced members of your leadership team. The final method that we are going to be exploring today is called 360 degree feedback. And this is used a lot in healthcare leadership sort of uh, um, improvement when you're trying to improve the competency of healthcare leaders. This is a process where leaders get feedback from individuals within their organization. So they can get feedback from their superiors, from their peers, from the subordinates and also from patients. And what that does is it provides a holistic 360 degree angle for the leader to be able to see how well they're doing from the perspectives of different individuals within their organization. This is normally done on an anonymous basis, which I think is really important because it allows the people providing the feedback to give honest appraisals of that leader. Now, there's a mixed bag of research on this, but I think the reason why that is, is because it depends on the individual leader and their ability to take on board the feedback and act on the feedback. And from my own research, I've realized that the acting on the feedback is the most important thing. If you're able to act 
then you are going to develop as a leader. If we're thinking about it in terms of examples, let's think about, you know, you trying to build up the competencies within your healthcare organization. You might deploy 360 degree feedback as a way of trying to overcome some of the cultural or power dynamics that normally are embedded within healthcare organizations. By keeping the feedback anonymous, you know, no one is going to get into trouble with their superiors for providing um, um, objective feedback that isn't complementary in all aspects. So I think 360 degree feedback, when used objectively and when actually implemented by the healthcare leader, is a, another really powerful tool that you can use to try and improve your leadership competency. So guys, those are the five methods that we can think about in terms of how we can improve our leadership competencies. Now, we also have to think about individual differences. Every leader is different. So some method might be more effective for one leader and less effective for another leader. That's something that we need to take into consideration. At the organizational level, every healthcare organization is very different. So it's really important for us to take into consideration the internal organizational environment and how that is going to impact on a leader's ability to develop. In addition to that, each country is very different as well. So we also have to take into consideration the external social cultural environment. We have to take into consideration, understand it and see how it then has an impact on the way in which we actually go about delivering our leadership development programs within our healthcare organizations. And finally, and I think really importantly, at the international level as well, there's going to be lots and lots of differences. Cultures are changing, the world is changing, how we develop our leaders is changing. So again, something that we need to take into consideration. But in essence, guys, when we're thinking about leadership competencies and how we develop leadership competencies within health and social care or within international health care, those five key methods that we've just gone through are really, really important. Thank you so much for connecting, for engaging and for exploring this episode of Leading Health with me. Much appreciated. Um, if you've liked the video or you want to see more, please subscribe. Please leave a like because that's really important for us. Um, and please leave me a comment on what other types of videos you would like me to make in relation to leading health. I'm open to all suggestions. So bring in the comments. Let's have a discussion. Let's keep interconnecting and let's keep leading health better.